on April 5th, 1722, in this remote, tiny corner of the world, aliens invaded. They came in ships that nobody could build and spoke a language that nobody could understand. These were not benevolent beings. Humanoids, to be sure, but they stank, and their skin was raw and discolored. They didn't last for long. They took a few measurements, killed a dozen people, got in their ships, and just left. As if they'd been a mirage, a fantasy. But they were real. The people they killed were real. And as soon as they were gone, the seeds that they'd planted in this society began to blossom. People started to die. Society began to crumble. Gods fell. By the time they returned, nothing was the same. Nothing would ever be the same because aliens had invaded, and they destroyed everything. The aliens were Dutch. Their arrival here would signal the complete collapse of Rapa Nui society. It was such a total destruction that they renamed the island after the moment of first contact, rather than the original inhabitants. We call it Easter Island, and the Chileans who administrate it call it Isla de Pascua, but it's Rapa Nui to those who care. But today's episode isn't really about Rapa Nui or its destruction. It's about storytelling. It's about how we remember trauma to make sure it never happens again, or at the very least, to make sure we're ready for it. Those first invaders arriving on these shores would have been new to this society, but they wouldn't have been new to the world. Many civilizations would have long since learned about them, waiting out the day when the horror would again find its way back to their shores. No matter how tranquil the world seems, the horizon can always bring destruction in an instant. In one form or another, aliens have always been a concern. I spend a lot of time deciding if I should tell this story. It isn't a comfortable topic for me. Talking about aliens publicly is something most people in the space industry avoid like the plague. Not because they're covering something up, but because nobody listens. If the answer doesn't fit what they've already decided to hear, it can't be the answer. Aliens are a religion to so many people worldwide, and as the son of an astronaut, I'm acutely aware of how deep that belief system goes. It's not a calm topic, and people rarely view it through a rational, analytical lens. I've had more people threaten my life about a floating speck of dust in our Space Oddity video than I can count on my hands. And as much as I don't want to open up this particular can of worms, I think it's something that should be analyzed because everybody talks about it like it's real, like any second we're about to be invaded from the sky. And, in a sense, they're right. From a certain perspective, I think believing in aliens makes perfect sense. But there aren't aliens. At least not the little green men that we're all imagining. Every single respectable scientist studying life in the universe agrees that there's no way extraterrestrials have visited this planet. And what's more, they likely never will. At least, not in the way we're expecting. So why are they so strong in our collective imagery? Why has this specific story endured around the planet? I'd venture to guess that its staying power comes not from the stars, but from something much closer to home, a hiccup of trauma being passed down through the ages. Because aliens have absolutely invaded our societies almost continuously for tens of thousands of years. They walk among us to this day, foreigners arriving in ships. If you were sitting on the beach in Rapa Nui all those years ago, you would have seen a ship unlike anything you'd ever imagined arrive on your shores. People of unimaginable colors, carrying tools far beyond your understanding, would have come out speaking words you'd never heard. They'd be shuffled before your leader and treat him like a lesser. When provoked, they'd kill your friends with magic. They'd bring death and disease like you'd never known possible. And then, just like that, they'd be gone. But eventually, they'd come back. You'd be dead, but your children might see them, or perhaps their children. If they were going to survive these creatures, they'd need to remember them, even if they weren't there to see them the first time. So you'd invent a story, pass it down through the ages, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of years later, and the story would remain the same. Strange humanoids are coming. They'll kidnap you, study you, kill you, and leave. Their technology is beyond comprehension. You have no chance to defeat them. You must fear them and watch the horizon. Tell your children and theirs after you. Aliens exist and they're coming for us. But Rapa Nui is not alone in experiencing this trauma. There's nothing new about this story. This is not the history of European expansion across the globe. It's the history of humanity itself. Since the dawn of sea travel, monsters from another world have been invading our societies. Be they Indian, Japanese, American, Irish, it doesn't matter. We've all been invaded, and we've all been invaders. 
Human history has seen countless examples of rape, pillage, and murder arriving under an unknown banner from an unknown land. Be they in canoes, longboats, frigates, or spacecraft, the meaning has always been the same. And you can see this form of storytelling showing up in other parts of our society as well. Just as hard to prove, but easily plausible theories exist around all sorts of our mythology. For example, there was a time when we lived alongside Neanderthals, and I don't think we ever stopped talking about it. If I'd seen one, I would have never stopped talking about it. But we did see them, and I don't believe we've truly ever forgotten it. At one point in human history, we lived alongside and even mated with beings similar to, but not quite us. Homo erectus, floresiensis, naledi, sapien denisova, and presumably a number of others we've simply yet to find. Each of these hominids would have looked a lot like modern humans, but with varying heights, weights, and physical skills. Some may have been just over three feet tall, while others would have pushed well over seven. And while folk history would have likely distorted their exact proportions over time, just as with aliens, I believe our stories of giants and ogres and trolls is just a hiccup. A memory of something we'd rather not forget. We undoubtedly tell ourselves these myths to remember because for a time, there would have been no way of knowing if these beings would ever come back. We shared caves with Neanderthals, outhunted the Homo erectus, and made children with the Denisova. It makes sense we'd try to remember them. It's the same the world over. Many myths appear rooted deep in a hidden truth. But like playing telephone on your grade school carpet, history has a way of getting distorted over time. We refer to these sort of half-remembrances as folk memory, oral histories passed down through people over many generations. In the ancient stories of Aboriginal societies, we see evidence of animals long dead, things we used to hunt. Extinct animals we are only just now finding in fossil form, clearly lining up to stories passed down through the ages. Humans may have hunted much of the world's megafauna to extinction, but that doesn't mean we ever truly forgot about them. If you'd ever hunted a mylodon by hand, chances are you'd tell your children about it, and they'd tell theirs. We remember these things because for the most part, they happened. At one point, this wasn't a myth, it was a memory, an experience. And I think that's what aliens are, an experience turned to memory, turned to myth. I absolutely believe that there is other forms of life in this universe, we've just yet to find it. The cosmos is simply too large and too complex for us to be the only thing growing in it. But at the same time, I don't think our view of aliens comes from outer space. I think it's just a modern rehashing of a very old story. An important story, to be sure. But I believe that deep down, we all know who we're really afraid of. There's no monster coming for us, but us. We're the aliens. We always were. This is Rare Earth. modelando las calles, eso, eso nomás, eso nomás, un saludo a toda la gente que ve los videos, drag it here, así nomás, perfecto.